Now this big blue bugger here, the Poco X3 Pro, is one of the most exciting smartphones launched so far in 2021, mostly because it's an upgraded version of last year's excellent Poco X3 NFC, which on the highly scientific Steven Seagal scale is definitely a full on proper executive decision. So what you get here is a small handful of upgrades, including stronger design and a performance boost to compete with recent rivals like the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Of course the burning question is, is the Poco X3 Pro an under siege or is it an under siege 2? Well, I've had my SIM slapped in there, been using it as my full-time smartphone for almost a week, and here's my in-depth Poco X3 Pro review. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So I'm going to start off rather negatively, unfortunately, and one thing I really don't enjoy about the Poco X3 Pro is the way it looks, which hasn't really changed at all from the old X3 NFC. I know this is a budget blower, but I find the understated aesthetics of the Redmi Note 10 Pro much more appealing. The X3 Pro's two-tone finish and slightly obnoxious branding definitely ain't doing anything at all for me, especially as that shiny central strip is a total grease magnet. You can grab the Poco X3 Pro in three different colours, this blue effort, otherwise also black or bronze, and I've got to say that darker effort definitely looks a bit better than this one. But the good thing is that the Poco X3 Pro is suitably durable despite being made of polycarbonate, no scratches or scuff to speak of so far, and if you are paranoid, you do at least get a condom case bundled in the box there to help keep it extra protected. And it's also good to see the Poco has upgraded the screen protection for the Pro model from Gorilla Glass 5 to Gorilla Glass 6, so this thing is super, super safe especially as you've got a pre-installed screen protector on there so it's basically tougher than a pack of petrol station beef jerky. At 215 grams though the Poco X3 Pro is also a proper heavy sod considering the plastic construction and factoring the near 6.7 inch design and one-handed play is about as enjoyable as wiping your bum with sandpaper although at least MIUI 12 does throw in a decent screen shrinking feature. And that's just one of many pleasurable additions that MIUI adds to that Android feature set. And of course MIUI is one of the more divisive launches out there, no denying that whatsoever. But I've got to say I am enjoying it a hell of a lot more than I used to just a year or two ago. Technically of course it is the Poco launcher here, or MIUI for Poco, but it's essentially the same MIUI experience that you get on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, down to the lovable control centre and those brilliant bonus bits like the video toolbox. A criticism of MIUI tends to fall in one of two categories, the first being, oh it's full of ads, and no it's really really not. The only time I ever saw any adverts of any description here on the Poco X3 Pro was when I was installing an app from Google Play, and as one kind soul in the comments of my unboxing pointed out, you can just tap on this little cog up here, and then tick receive recommendations, or rather untick it, and then those will just vanish from sight. And the second criticism is that MIUI is a buggy piece of doggy plop. And I've got to say it again, yeah sure, I saw the occasional little quirk here in MIUI, but I saw far more bugs in One UI when I was reviewing Samsung's Galaxy A52 5G. And as for iPhones, don't even get me started on iPhones, all right? So if you're going to criticize MIUI, you certainly can't be jumping on a Samsung and an Apple and saying that that is a better experience. I also approve of that edge-mounted fingerprint sensor, which does the job beautifully. It's fast, it rarely demands a second scan unless you've got sticky digits or something, and it meant that I rarely had to rely on the face unlock, which is really helpful when you're outside and masked up. Well, thankfully the face recognition is really good if you need that too. As for the storage, well it comes with 128 gigs as standard, otherwise you can throw a bit more cash Poco's way for 256 gigs worth, which is pretty rare at this sort of price point. And either way, it's UFS 3.1, nice and nippy again, something found more on more premium handsets. And if even 256 gigs isn't enough space for you, well good news, you've got a dual SIM setup in here, otherwise you can use that second SIM slot to stick in a micro SD memory card up to one terabyte in size. Surely that's enough space. I mean, like, how much porn can one person download? Now, the Poco X3 Pro's 6.67 inch IPS screen has been ripped wholesale from the X3 NFC, serving up the same respectably sharp Full HD plus visuals. Sure, it's not an OLED screen, which is what you do get with some rivals like the Redmi Note 10 Pro and Xiaomi's Mi 11 Lite. And while this display is apparently HDR10 certified, you currently don't get HDR streaming support with services like Netflix. But all the same, contrast is respectable and you can tweak that colour output to suit your liking. Just bear in mind of course the no OLED display means no always on display feature which is a real shame. Although you do get the tiniest dinkiest little notifications light hidden away in this earpiece speaker up top. And like a lot of budget smartphones these days, a surprising amount in fact, the Poco X3 Pro also supports 120Hz super fast refresh. Although skimming around in the UI is generally a little bit 
juddery, not super smooth, unfortunately. That's generally down to the heaviness of me UI. My only real complaint here is the brightness levels, which, you know, max them out. You can just about see what's going on on a sunny day. And we have actually been having sunny days here in the UK. Hip, hip, hurrah. Uh, but unfortunately, the auto brightness is about as useful as a chocolate sauna. I found I was constantly having to manually tweak it because it was just a little bit too dim, especially in the evenings. You've also got a stereo speaker arrangement on the Poco X3 Pro, and that's pretty bloody good for the price. Those speakers pack a proper wallop at top volume and without much distortion. And like a lot of budget blows, you've got a proper headphone jack here, so you can hoy out that stupid dongly thing. You've got full support for high-res audio on here via the old headphone jack, of course, and even when streaming via Bluetooth 5.0, I found I got a really nice crisp, clear sound coming through as well and a pretty decent range. But the big upgrade here over the old Poco X3 NFC is that Snapdragon 860 chipset, which is a fresh rejiggered version of the excellent 865, which powered a lot of last year's flagship phones. You'll get either 6 or 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM, depending on which model of the Poco X3 Pro you pick up. My review sample was the 6 giga, and I had absolutely bugger all issues with the everyday performance beyond the occasional judder when flicking through that UI, which as I mentioned before, probably down to the launcher. That Adreno 640 GPU can handle pretty much everything thrown its way, including a tasty bit of Genshin Impact action, although I did have to drop those detail levels at times to keep the action smooth, as I did see a fair few frame rate drops on those default medium settings. Still, I did find that I could game for hours without stopping thanks to the liquid cool technology stuffed inside of the Poco X3 Pro. This basically consists of a copper heat pipe partnered up with some sexy graphite layer action. Plus the 240Hz touch sampling of that display means sod all latency when you're swiping and prodding the screen in a semi-frantic fashion. You also get a bevy of gaming features to give you more of a chance when you're surrounded by gribblies who'd like nothing better than to turn your face into the next loincloth. Note, however, that you get sod all 5G connectivity here on the Poco X3 Pro still. It's a real shame that they haven't chucked that in. But if that's going to be an issue for you, you want that extra bit of future proofing, well, they've got the likes of the Xiaomi Mi 10T Lite, which is still an absolute bloody stunner. As for the battery tech, it's a 5160mAh cell, no change there versus the older Poco X3 NFC. And I found that was absolutely brilliant. Even a crazy long day with about sort of seven to eight hours of screen on time, plenty of media stream, good bit of camera use, all that good stuff. I still found the Poco X3 Pro had plenty of juice left in the tank at the end of that one. And like quite a lot of other budget smartphones that have been launched recently, you've got 33 watt wires charging and of course no wireless charging as well. So let's finish up with a squint of that quad lens camera tech and the Poco X3 Pro Pro rocks a 48 megapixel primary shooter which captures 12 megapixel pics by default but they still pack in enough finer detail to look good on a big screen. The Pro usually does a solid job of keeping your subject sharp even when they're squirming around more than a squirrel with the squits. You usually get quite natural skin tones although when shooting in brighter daylight the background will often be saturated and I did see some lens flare and halo in here and there. But for a bunch of smartphones, these photos look pretty good to be fair. Indoor snaps also come out well if your subject is perfectly still, while the night mode helps to brighten up a dimly lit scene. And the AI mode can swap between features to give you the best possible shot, although at times this does also really piddle about with the colour reproduction and gives you an artificial looking image. The addition of a 2 megapixel depth sensor helps to produce some stunning portrait shots, adding in a tweakable bokeh effect in the background. And you've also got an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which again is respectably efficient for an affordable blower. The colour reproduction isn't quite as natural and you will see some distortion at times, but it does the job when needed. And last up, there's whoop de doo a 2 megapixel macro lens which produces low res crappy looking photos of things up close, if that's your bag. My 4K video samples came out pretty good on the whole, again pretty much what I would expect from a cheaper handset. Image stabilisation is decent even at that Ultra HD resolution, although audio pickup is a little quiet in front of the camera. My own voice was certainly picked up much clearer and louder, where you get the usual distortion whenever the wind starts gusting. And finally, around front, you've got a 20 megapixel selfie shooter, and it's absolutely fine, again with those same portrait smarts as the rear cam. Even indoors with soft light, and you'll get a good looking shot as long as you are stock still. So right there is what I think of the Poco X3 Pro after using it as my full-time blower for about a week or so. And I've got to say, I'm still slightly leaning more towards the Redmi Note 10 Pro. I absolutely adore that smartphone, but there's lots to love here. And that Snapdragon 860 chipset is good news for anyone who wants to game on something a bit more demanding. Uh, though, as I say, the likes of Genshin Impact may be a little bit of a stretch unless you really bump down those detail settings. Now, I've just done a full massive budget comparison between this bad boy, that Redmi Note 10 Pro, the Realme 8 Pro, 
Store and Xiaomi's fresh new Mi 11 Lite as well. So go check that out if you want a closer look at some of the best budget smartphones of 2021. For more reviews of the best budget blowers, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.